Hello, this is Mark Hubs with Arrows Gone Bullet Modes. Today we're going to be talking about the Pieta Confederate Griswold and Gunnison revolver in 36 caliber. We'll talk a little bit about uh, the original gun that it's patterned off of and how this matches it and then we'll go to the range and see how it shoots and we'll go through the good, the bad and the ugly for this revolver. Stick with us. As you know, the Griswold and Gunnison was the most prolific of all the Confederate revolvers with about 3,700 made. And of course, that's just a drop in a bucket to what was actually needed by the Confederacy. They relied, for the most part, on captured weapons or weapons that were already in the hands of Southern troops before the war started. Griswold and Gunnison was essentially a modified copy of the Model 1851 Colt with several uh, important distinctions. First of all, it had a round barrel instead of octagonal and a bronze frame. The reproduction is actually made of brass. We'll get into more of these details as we go along. I'd like to say a little bit about uh, brass frame revolvers in general. Most of the ones that are available on the market today are actually what we call fantasy guns. Now, they did not ex exist in that form back during the cap and ball era. And the, the most common one is the Pieta Model 1851 in 44 caliber with a brass frame. They also make a, a Remington in brass frame. There are two, however, that were produced originally in brass frames. Both of them were Confederate revolvers. And of course, one is the Griswold and Gunnison, uh, which actually had a bronze frame originally instead of brass, but uh, I won't uh, fault them for that, uh, that mistake or that uh, ch choice of metal. And also the uh, Spiller and Burr, which I hope to have another video on that one in the future. But for the others, uh, they may not have existed at the time, but they're affordable to uh, people who are on a limited budget and they're fun to shoot. And if we can draw someone in the hobby by using one of those low end brass frame revolvers, then, then I'm all for it. And we'll go on and we'll talk a little bit about the history of the Griswold and Gunnison. Samuel Griswold was born on December 27, 1790 in Burlington, Connecticut. He moved to Clinton, Georgia with his family in 1818. He eventually created a successful cotton gin factory in 1830 and quickly became the largest producer of cotton gins in the nation. Griswold's village, Griswoldville, was an industrial site with a cotton gin plant, soap and towel factory, candle factory, saw and grist mill, post office, and its own church. At the outbreak of the Civil War, the Griswold Cotton Gin Factory was leased to the Confederate government and retooled to make firearms. The revolver produced at Griswoldville was called the Griswold and Greer originally, and later called the Griswold and Gunnison, after Arvin Nye Gunnison, Griswold's business partner. The Griswold and Gunnison revolvers are copies of the Colt 1851 Navy revolver, and were made with distinctive bronze frames because of the shortage of steel in the South. Like almost all Confederate revolvers, it was in 36 caliber. Also typical of the Griswold is a barrel and cylinder manufactured from twisted iron instead of steel. Here are some artifacts recovered from the side of the Griswold factory. An unfinished barrel and a twisted billet of iron, probably intended for use in a cylinder. Despite being plagued with materials and skilled labor shortages, Griswold produced about 3,700 well-made guns between 1862 and 64. However, Griswoldville was destroyed on November 20th, 1864 by the 9th Michigan Cavalry during Sherman's march to the sea. Although Griswolds are patterned off the Colt Navy, there are some significant differences besides the bronze frame. The barrels were round, similar to a Dragoon revolver, and because a round barrel is much easier to produce on a lathe as compared to milling the flats on the octagonal barrel that we see on the Colt. Also, the grip has a profile with a much more upward angle. Griswolds were known for consistent quality. There were two variations. The first ones produced were rounded on the barrel lug top. Later guns had three flats milled on the top of the lug. Otherwise, both variations were identical. Interest in the Griswold revolver was given a boost with the recent television series, Hell on Wheels, where the protagonist carried what he and others refer to as a rebel Griswold revolver. However, the gun carried by the character Cullen Bohannon 
is actually a fantasy version of the Colt Model 1860 Army in 44 caliber, but with a brass frame. The current reproduction of the Griswold is made in spurts by Pieta. It is not in constant production and is sometimes difficult to find. Mine is dated 2015. EMF is the only vendor that I can currently find that has them listed in stock. At first glance, the Pieta clone is, is pretty close to the original. Second variation, Griswold. It's a nice looking gun. But Pieta uses as many parts as possible from their other 36 caliber Colt guns, so the grip frame will not be as angled as the original. And for some reason, Pieta uses a back strap that is, is inexplicably cut for a shoulder stock. I mentioned the good, the bad, and the ugly. Well, this is definitely the ugly. The loading lever rattles like crazy, and there is an extreme amount of cylinder gap. The proper cylinder gap for a black powder revolver should be between 0 0.04 and 0 0.08. As you can see, this one comes in at .013. Is it unsafe to shoot? Probably not. But that gap will send a lot of flame and uh, unburnt powder out the side of the gun and also play havoc with your velocities. Now, I just happen to have a extra Pieta 18, 1851 cylinder on hand, so this is what I use to go to the range. And it mics out at a proper .07. Now here's some positive news. I took a bullet and I pressed it into the chamber and then I pushed it back out through the nipple hole and then pressed it through the barrel uh, to see if it properly engraved the rifling. And the chamber diameter matches the groove diameter very well. The bullet was fully engraved as it came out the muzzle end where I pressed it out. Most reproduction revolvers typically have undersized chambers. So in this case, Pieta got it right. We'll be shooting three different bullets when we go to the range. On the right is the Colt Cartridge Works 36 bullet by Eras Gone. In the middle, the Richmond Laboratories 36. And we'll also be shooting 380 round balls. The Car uh, Conicals will shoot at 17 grains, which is the service charge. And we'll be shooting 20 grains with the round ball. I fired about 60 rounds at the range, and uh, the, the weapon was a pleasure to shoot. Uh, it never gummed up, never had a cap jam, recoil was low with the 17 grain ch uh, charge with the conical and a 20 grain charge with the round ball. Overall, it was a pleasure. Uh, other than the uh, original issue with the cylinder gap with the other cylinder, uh, the revolver did pretty good. I regret that I don't have any downrange video, and that's because of a problem with an SD card in my video camera. But uh, we will go to some stills of each one of the targets I fired so you can get an idea of how each one of the projectiles performed. I shot all of these at 20 yards, and the first group was with the 36 Colt with the lubricated wad under the bullet. And as you can see, it was a fairly large group, seven, group, seven inches off to the right. Uh, the, the far left has two holes in it. There's six rounds inside the blue circle. Uh, not terribly impressive. Next was the same bullet with grease over the bullet. And as you can see, it tightened up quite a bit. And this has been my experience that I typically get better accuracy without a lubricated wad under the bullet. It's, it, they seem to do better with, with some grease on the top of the bullet instead. The next one is with the Richmond Laboratories 36. And as you know, this is a heavier bullet. It's 147 grains. And without the flyer uh, at the bottom of the target, it actually would have been about a, a three inch group. But I, I pulled one and stretched it out to about six and a half. And of course, this is with uh, grease over the bullet. There's no lubricated wad. And the last group is three and a half inches, which is very respectable. And I was shooting at a six o'clock hole, so this is almost at point of aim, just slightly to the left. And it's just with a good old fashioned 380 round ball with a little grease smeared on the top. So there you have it. Uh, that's my take on this particular Griswold and Gunnison. And of course, it's biggest, uh, biggest complaint I have about this one is the cylinder gap. Uh, fortunately, I had this extra Pieta Model 51 cylinder on hand so we could still do our, our range testing. 
but don't uh, if you're interested in one of these don't let that turn you off I think the main thing in choosing any revolver if you get to handle it first is to see if there's a gap inspect it closely is there a rattle are there other things you should be concerned about and I have to have full disclosure I bought this one from the Cabela's bargain cave and I got it for a song so I can't complain at all about uh, the revolver for $125 but it may have been returned for that very reason. And I wasn't uh, diligent enough to check that when I made the purchase. But I'm still not dissatisfied with what I paid for it. But overall, uh, the gun was fun to shoot. Uh, it shot fairly accurately, especially with round ball. And uh, if you want a Confederate style revolver that has some historic accuracy, uh, this is the most common one made during the war and it will give you that kind of service if you're looking for a living history style revolver uh, for your shooting pleasure. I appreciate you joining us today. If you got any comments please leave them. Uh, if you enjoyed the video like it and please go to my website and see my different uh, my line of different bullet modes for historic bullets. Thanks again.